It's like where in the future today. The folks at Halliday are sponsoring this video to talk about heads-up displays and reducing the number of distractions from your phone. Behold, the Halliday AI glasses, billed as the world's first proactive AI glasses with an invisible display. The brand made a bit of a splash at CES this year, one of the announcements I was most interested in, and I'm excited to say I've gotten to rock this headset for a while to test drive them. Now, what I'm wearing right now is a prototype without just actually poked myself in the eye. What I'm wearing right now is a prototype without lenses. So folks in my audience who complain about glare in my other glasses videos, they should be happy now. A quick tour around the hardware. They look like normal glasses. It's the most exciting aspect of the modern heads-up display. It should just blend into your daily routine, and it should not call a ton of attention to you using a gadget. These are incredibly light. My prototype doesn't have lenses, but even with glass, they shouldn't weigh more than 35 grams. A major concern for an all-day wearable. We don't want a lot of weight on our skull, and we especially don't want a lot of weight on our nose. For how light they are, what's impressive is how much other hardware is included. A simple USB port is on the right arm, so we don't need a proprietary charge cable or a charger cable. Case. There are practical speakers in each arm for audio playback. Probably not going to be the audiophile grade listening experience some people are looking for, but they're great for notifications, alerts, and uh, for playing some podcasts. <laughs> Every swing feels big when you just want one. <laughs> Microphones are built in for AI interactions and translation. There's a power button on the right arm and a touch strip to navigate the UI on the right side. And then we get to the star of the show, a tiny projector system that beams information directly into your eye. This hardware is so cool. Okay, a quick tangent. The industry is still testing different ways to put data up in the air out in front of us. Birdbath optics are great for immersive cinema glasses, but they can be problematic to wear out and about the way they can also periscope information from the ground right into your face. We're starting to see some other projector and waveguide solutions, but they require more complicated lens mounting hardware, more expensive optical systems, and it can be more expensive to include prescription lenses. And we've had prisms, let me see if I can catch light on that. We've had prisms for over a decade, I mean, since the earliest days of Google Glass, and these can be less expensive, but they're also certainly less discreet. And honestly, we still kind of need to play with all of these different options and hardware solutions. I still feel there's a lot we need to learn about the human face and human eyes. So what Halliday has done here is find one of the best balance of optical presentation per dollar. The projector isn't bouncing light off of a lens or some other surface, it's going right into your eye. The projector is also part of the frame, and the frame acts as a backstop. It blocks light coming from behind the projector. Without having to add other covers or sunglasses, it naturally makes this easier to read in direct sunlight. So we arrive at a brighter display which uses less power to project that information. And this also helps us avoid some of those other issues from older heads-up displays that, that they needed to be fit specifically to one person's face. This little projector can slide and angle, and there's a focus ring for folks to adjust. It's a well-thought-out system for a first-generation product that should cover a broad range of consumer faces, and eyeballs, while also making this experience a little easier to share. I loved my focals by North, but I couldn't put them on someone else's face because they were biologically designed for my eyes. There really cannot be any resale market for something that's biologically fit to one consumer. This is a far cry from the old days, like Google Glass or Focals by North, where you could only get a headset fit for your face in person at a store or at some kiosk. With a minimum of fuss, this is something I can share. Uh, talking about that setup, it took about a minute to angle the projector just to see an image, and then maybe another minute or two to fine tune and focus, and then you spend a couple minutes uh, installing a companion app on your phone, you pair it to your phone, pair it to the ring, get everything set up, and you have a smartwatch experience floating at eye level. It's monochrome green, Simple and clean. It's a little circular UI that can be controlled on the frames or by pairing with the smart ring, making interactions 
even more discreet. And we're kind of already training people to pay attention when folks are out and about to track what people are doing when they touch their glasses. Uh, they might be doing something techy or taking video of me or hacking my mainframes. And let's be honest, I did get a little germaphobe during the pandemic, so anything that reduces the need to touch something that sits on my face is gonna be appreciated. A little gesture to a ring is a lot less noticeable than poking your glasses. And fitness rings are becoming more popular, so the act of using this as a control should be a bit more discreet. There are no cameras on the holiday. That's not the kind of solution this is currently, but because of other glasses, folks might be sensitive to where cameras might be going. This is a solution I've been advocating for since Google Glass arrived over a decade ago. We want a simple, accessible platform for at-a-glance bits of information, which is more discreet and less distracting than even a smartwatch. There's a bit of a social science to our technology. In the middle of a conversation with another human face-to-face, -face, this is a really rude gesture. If you get lots of notifications go into your wrist. I'm purposely taking this watch off so you can see my watch tan line. Your phone and your watch are kind of terrible at handling notifications and alerts. As a society, we've just sort of accepted that there's this component of tech rudeness. But with each new generation of incorporating data closer to our biology, we want interactions to get easier and simpler. We want every generation of distraction to get a little bit less distracting, as we, of course, have to field more and more noise from our pocket computers. We have to nail this core idea first, and the tech is cycling aggressively. It's crazy to see a new flavor of this experience at such a low price now. When we add additional features on top of the notifications and the at-a-glance information, that's really just the icing on a delicious cake for me. Holiday's companion app serves up some AI for you to play with. The Glass's audio memo mode can record meetings and conversations and then later deliver a summary with key elements of that conversation. There's also a proactive AI agent that can follow a conversation and provide bits of information or insight while you're chatting. It's also fun to have this on while listening to a podcast and get these little extra pop-up facts about the topic that you're listening to. Holiday is listing this as a core feature for the product. And I'm absolutely not presenting this video as a review, as I'm using it in a really early prototype state. The AI can only be as good as the data you plug into. But what I'm getting a glimpse of right now is how well the glasses can follow conversational speech. There's a lot of potential we can see in delivering agentic AI in more lifestyle situations. The version Holiday is promoting is one where fact checking can happen in almost real time and where user questions can be answered mid conversation. But right now, I won't hold it against the glasses that they don't know who the director of RoboCop 2 is. What's encouraging is to see the framework in operation working this well and working this fast. It's all still data dependent, but that round trip is happening quicker and quicker. Language translation is another important feature for a lot of travelers, you know, making communication a touch more organic. Halliday will eventually support up to 40 languages and the core language packs included on my prototype, uh, Spanish, French, Chinese. That translation happened pretty quick. I'm not trying to drag out a lot of comparisons, not quite yet, but other solutions I've tried they tend to be a bit more walkie-talkie. You talk, translate. I talk, translate. But when you have fast data, when you're in good coverage, we're getting translations that can almost hang with more organic conversations or even keep up with movie dialogue. Sometimes, right now, a bit overly exact a translation, but still, it's progress seeing these services speed up. And there's a teleprompter option called Cheat Sheet that can help you keep notes up at eye level. I may or may not be using that right now. You don't know. If I were using it, I'd be controlling the scroll with my fancy smart ring. You can't see my hands. Checkmate, nerds. Moving on. And the biggie for me, a core feature for this class of product, the ability to not only receive notifications from your phone, but also reply to messages through the glasses. Speech to text in a heads-up display is a feature I sorely miss 
from older smart glasses. Any second I can save while interacting with a message, responding to the message, and not pulling my phone out is greatly appreciated these days. And above my current prototype experiences, Halliday is already working on other little applets to contribute to the experience. With better audio recognition, it'll be fun to have lyrics in view while you're listening to music. Turn-by-turn -turn navigation is a biggie for me. Now, I would never recommend any optical solution while you're operating a motor vehicle, but walking directions in a new city is super helpful. I hate traveling and holding out a phone and walking around advertising that I don't know where I'm going. Now that info pops up at eye level. Instead of looking down at my phone, I'm getting directions looking up and seeing the city I'm visiting. And there's a lot we can expand on. And as this class of product builds more momentum, we should expect more developer interest in pairing established apps to smart watchy kinds of experiences right in your eyeball. There's so much we can already move right up to eye level. I'm using a prototype, but this whole package is refreshingly refined. I'm not a fan of the idea that we'll build super rich augmented reality experiences first, and that folks will test drive those experiences with big VR helmets, and eventually we'll distill that tech into smaller frames. Top down isn't really working. We've been trying to do that for well over a decade with almost nothing to show in the consumer space. I think a much better solution is to build ground up. Get more people comfortable with glasses. Learn more about how different faces need to be supported and then we can add tech features to those glasses over time. It's more accessible, less expensive, less intimidating, and it brings a clear practical convenience to the table right now. A heads-up display fundamentally changes your relationship with your phone. It changes how you consume data, how you react to notifications. It's more discreet and less distracting. And unlike the current rich AR and mixed reality headsets, these can easily go a whole day on a single charge. You don't need to babysit them or find ways to power them. You manage them a lot less. So you're thinking about them less and they just blend into your day more. This is exactly the kind of competitive option we should be seeing. And it's disappointing that larger tech companies aren't really participating. <laughs> Not seriously. How few versions of this idea have really made it to market? And I get it, this stuff isn't easy. I mean, think about audio. After a century of headphones, it's still impossible to create a perfect one-size-fits-all earbud, which is comfortable and sounds great for everyone. Because ears are funky and no two ears are the same. Faces and eyes are an order of magnitude more complicated to design for. We need more options and different presentations in the space to learn as much as we can. Most people, even a huge chunk of tech enthusiasts, genuinely do not understand what a face display can do. As I put different glasses on my family and friends' faces, it's like I'm slingshotting them into the future. They've never seen anything like this. They don't even have words to describe what it's like. So this idea is finally getting the respect it deserves. And Halliday specifically is delivering a unique and more affordable option in this space with a design that helps expand the number of consumers who might be able to use display glasses. Letting the user make adjustments instead of cementing the frame in place for one face that is a clutch adaptation the market really needed. It's really exciting times. So you will absolutely see these glasses, or at least these frames, pop up in future videos. And I will definitely be looking at some roundups and comparisons for all the different options out there. So stay tuned. The future is on your face. I sound a little better in my head while I was writing the script. So. A huge thank you to the folks at Halliday for letting me take an early test drive, an early peek at these glasses. This is one of the areas of tech I've been most passionate about for 13 years now. And it's tough. It's tough not getting a bit geeky emotional, seeing some real options coming to market. And as I test these different options and solutions, the folks who get to see my coverage first are, of course, 
my amazing patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. They got an early write up on these glasses about an hour after I visited the folks from Halliday, a real first impressions. This list of names scrolling by on your screen, another huge thank you as these are the people that are helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. And they're basically the coolest tech people in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet. I'm basically some gadget guy everywhere these days, everywhere I go, and I will catch you all on the next video.